Okay, number 10, another fifth degree polynomial. Let's just go through the analysis uh, for it. I'll write the function down. Although it does take effort to factor it, it does factor nicely. I mean, there's many ways to try it. I, I'm, I'm a fan of rational root theorem, um, and then certainly, you know, long division, things like that, or equating coefficients. The first derivative, I gotta be careful here. By the way, I'm, what I mean by careful, last problem I made a mistake. I'm not sure how that creeped in there, but it did. Let me just take a look at that. 5x4, 24x cubed, 33x squared, 4x minus 12. Boy, that factored, I guess. Second derivative. Let me see if I got that right. 20x cubed, uh, 72x squared, 66x plus 4. Okay, before I do anything, what I want to claim over here is that it did take me um, work to get through that. There's no doubt about it. There's work that's involved in that. So the first thing I would do is write the roots down. And where the root's going to be, 1 minus 1. We'll look at the picture in a moment. And then minus 2 occurs three times. And by the way, I'm expecting to see that behavior in the picture. And let's go back to the picture. So at minus 2, I'm definitely seeing that as a root. I'm definitely seeing minus 1 as a root. And I'm definitely seeing 1 as a root. Now, these are not being repeated, but these are repeated three times. And I'm expecting to see that behavior. In other words, it's going through there. All right? Now, the other thing I'm expecting to see in behavior is this one over here is I'm looking at it, and I am expecting to see relative mins, relative maximums. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to outline. I'm expecting to see a relative max there and a relative minimum over there, all right? Now, granted, I'm not going to go through all the detail on it, but I do want to point out that second derivative is going to give it to us, all right? So looking at it, right, minus 2, right? Well, you know what happens at minus 2? I'm getting a flat region over there, a flat region. And that's to be expected because it's really not changing signs there. This guy's where it's changing signs. So you'd have to solve that for zero. And there's going to be two of them. You're going to get one here. you get one over here. You might want to have to do that. Now, for the third derivative, I'm sorry, second derivative, uh, you're expecting uh, behavior there, concavity changes. And certainly, let's take a look at the picture. Concave down. Concave up. Concave down. Concave up right? I'm definitely seeing some of that from this picture over here. For example, I see a concavity change at the value minus 2. I'm saying that's maybe not clear as day, but if you zoom in, you're going to see the concavity change over there. The other ones, you're going to need the quadratic formula, but you're going to find the other two. What are the two? There's two more. There's one here, and there's one over, where's the other place that's going to change concavity? Somewhere over here about, all right? So, you're going to find those. you got to do it if you want to do that work. They're not asking for it, though. All right, this brings us to the end of this problem set. The problem set really was designed for root uh, finding roots. Uh, we've been doing this for some time. It's a little tedious. Bottom line, we also refine the pictures by looking at derivatives as well. Also, natures of the, of the repetitive roots here. It's also important. Thank you.